just the movement of money that's happening. Now, that is pretty elementary, but that's not the most important part. Let me share with you what you need to be looking at because there are certain different types of investments uh, that you have and different reporting. I'll give you an example. The other day I was looking at a client statement that was from another firm and it showed that the value of his statement was around $6,500, that's pretty close, and that he had a, they said a percent of income and it had 24 percent. Wow, that sounds pretty good. But what it didn't show, this is where I get really disgusted and frustrated with the smoke and mirrors they play in a statement. He had put in um, $16,500 into that fund and had a minus $10,000 in capital loss. Sometimes it may not be a minus, it may be in parentheses. So a parentheses and a minus basically mean the same thing, except the minus means money's moved, the parentheses means it's money that's lost, but it's unrealized. In other words, you haven't actually sold, so you haven't lost that money yet, but on paper, it's down. This company based the gain of that 24% on this amount, and they were bragging about it. Mr. Client, we've made you 24%. Why would you want to move your account elsewhere? Well, folks, they left out the fact that it was down $10,000. Here's the truth. This client paid $10,000. And by the way, this 24% equaled $1,400. This client paid $10,000 to buy $1,400 worth of interest. Now, am I missing something here? Is that a good investment? You pay $10,000 to make $1,400? You see, what they failed to do was add this back in to this and then get their percentage, which would have been more like 8% that he made, but 8% still didn't cover the loss. It might have taken $1,400 off the loss, but he was still in the hole. Yet they were trying to make it look like he had actually made money and he made double-digit returns. So watch out for that. Don't just take what they put on there at face value. You look at the total amount you put in and you divide the number that they say you've made by that total amount, that's the real percentage. For example, 24% was $1,400, here you would take $1,400 and you would divide it by not 6,500 like they did, but by 16,500, that will give you the true percentage that you made. So watch out for the smoke and mirrors, understand what the minus means, understand what the parentheses means. But there's still something far greater than this that you're not looking at. And I hope this is helping. There's a lot more to statements than we have time to cover, but I hope that you're beginning to understand that these statements have a lot of moving parts and some of them will try and share with you things that aren't accurate. And how they can do this legally, I don't know, but they do. But here it is. We look at the value of our portfolio. Let's go back to that $130,000 and we stop. That's not the number to look at, not, not, especially not in a down market. If you know the markets drop from month to month, you know that number is going to drop as well. There's no surprise there. You know it's going to be lower, and yet you punish yourself by opening up your statement, looking at it, and saying, oh my gosh, it has gone down more. Let me give you a different category, and it's usually titled T quantity. What that is, is the number of shares you now own. Remember those little minuses I was talking about? Minus 20, minus $3, minus $80, and so on. Those are dividends that are being reinvested back into your portfolio, and they're buying you more shares. So last month, say you own 851 shares. This month's statement, you own 895 shares. What happened? The number of shares went up while your value went down. 
That's the way the market works. And that's how you make money. So stop looking at this number until the market hits a bull market and starts rebounding, and then you can look at it if you want to to make you feel better. But look at this number. How many more shares do I own this month than I did last month? And this should be a positive number. I'm going to tell you this. If it's not, you're not in the right investments. I say that without any hesitation. If your shares are not growing month to month, you're in the wrong investments. Because the market has been screaming, buy me, I'm cheap. And you better be buying shares while the market's down. So start looking at the total quantity of shares and go back and do some research. Take your last six statements and, and follow this number and see how it has ticked up while the value has been ticking down. Because here's what's going to happen. When the market turns around, this is going to go up and this is going to go down because you're going to sell these things. And let me give you one quick piece of information that you've got to know. People that looked at the market or their statement every week made an average of 18%. People that looked at it every month made an average of 28%. People that looked at their statement, uh, or actually never looked at their statement at all, made an average of 34%. Looking at this stuff can cause you to make decisions that cost you money. Which one do you want to make? 18%? 28 or 34. Focus on this, folks. That's what it's all about. There's one other thing that it's all about. The quality of life is not summed up just by the quantity of your possessions. So we'll see you next week on You, Me, and Wall Street. Good night. If you would like to contact us, call 501-223-6000 or go to our website, you, me, and wallstreet.com. We'll see you next week for another edition of You, Me, and Wall Street.